Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Tracy Glenn and I'm one of the, the Tertulia organizers along with Matthew Hayes, uh, Daniel Tubb and Christy Elaine and we are based uh, at either St. Thomas University or the University of New Brunswick in Fredericton on the unceded territory of the Wollstapway. Um, I noticed that many of you are not from, uh, from Fredericton or, uh, and uh, maybe from, um, from Alberta, where our speaker is from. And so you might not know what a Tertulia is. We've been holding these uh, kind of philosophy cafes for the past two years, uh, where we talk about big thinkers, artists that have shaped our lives. Uh, so tonight, our Tertulia talk is being delivered by Amy Dreyer, uh, who's a Calgary-based artist, so joining us from Calgary, who has studied um, fine arts at Mount Allison University, so that's her uh, maritime connection, <laughs> um, as well as at the Alberta College of Art and Design and the G Glasgow School of Art in Scotland. So Amy's paintings are in numerous collections across Canada and the U.S., uh, including in the Alberta Foundation uh, for the Arts Public Art Collection. And you can follow, visit Amy's work um, on our website uh, at fragmentsofsoul.com. Uh, so tonight, Amy will be talking about Frida Kahlo and how uh, she relates to her as an artist and, and as a woman. Uh, so I guess I think we're ready to have Amy take it away. Okay, well... Thank you so much for coming. Um, I can't really see any of you, but I know you're here watching. So um, my name's Amy Dreyer, already introduced. Thank you. Um, so I'm starting with this particular slide. Um, it's a photo taken by CTK Photography in my studio in 2009. And I'm just interested in this particular photo because it speaks of the dialogue between the artist and the artwork also between myself and Frida Kahlo and between Frida and different versions of herself. Um, also between uh, the broader and larger connection that many people feel uh, towards this Mexican artist, Frida Kahlo. So connecting to Frida, just a little breakdown of what I plan to talk about in this next little, little bit of time. Um, my beginnings as a painter, uh, uh, painting women specifically, and, um, and how I focus on, on women in my art. Um, Frida as an artist and a woman, and how I connect to that, to suffer and to overcome. Um, suffering was a large part of Frida's life, and um, in some ways, really what drew, drew me to her in the first place. Um, so her suffering, but also her overcoming of that suffering. Um, and, and that really drew me in and, and attracted me to her. And those are some of the themes that I work with in my work. Um, also the butterfly transformation and change in my own work. And paintings and portraits interspersed with Frida. So some of my paintings of Frida, some of her paintings and the way they interact uh, with one another. Um, and also her themes around immortality, that art doesn't die. Um, she, one of her quotes is that I paint flowers so they will not die. And she really is focused on capturing the moment. Um, and then finally, um, ongoing works that I did in Berlin. So I actually put together this talk a few years ago and I was in Berlin a couple years ago. Um, painting women there and so it's a little bit uh, kind of what I was working on at the time but it's relevant to this talk so <laughs> so my studio my studio is my sanctuary um, it's a place where great things can be imagined where tools can be used um, narratives and visuals meet and um, I've had my current Calgary studio since 2002 uh, so about 18 years. I also have a garage studio since my son was born a couple of years ago. And so, um, so I have two spaces, but my main downtown studio I've had for a long time. And I still paint there as regularly as I can. Um, so I'm down there quite a bit. Um, when I was getting started, I had a number of different studios and uh, mostly in universities. And I was taking a, a course at the U of C um, in women's studies um, 
I can't remember exactly what year it was, but I was taking a women's studies course in the spring and summer. And I really liked to read about women's stories, um, layer upon layer of simplicity and complexity and voice. And after one of my classes, I went to this, this university studio and I did um, one of my early self portraits where I was trying to describe the layers of the self. And um, yeah, so basically that this was one of my first self portraits done in 2001 um, and, and kind of describes those layers of complexity. Going forward, I've done many paintings of women. I think it's really important uh, for a woman to capture women from a, a woman's perspective, repetitive, but um, many throughout history, women have been painted by men quite often. And so I just think as a woman artist, it's really essential to, to paint women from our own, our own perspective. Um, so these two pieces, they're called Matisse Dress 1 and 2. Um, they're really vibrant. I had the model come to my studio. She was, she plays the guitar. So she was holding the guitar and playing the music. And I was just aiming to kind of capture that color and vibrancy and pattern. Um, so in 2017, I participated in the People's Portraits Portrait Prize in uh, Calgary, Alberta. And I painted a fellow artist named Melanie Aikenhead. Now, if you're from Alberta, you might know her. She owns Inglewood Art Supplies. She's a really great person and she's a really great artist. And I did a painting of her and a painting of myself. And she did a painting of me and herself. Um, and our, our works showed beside one another um, at this event, the People's Portrait Prize, uh, at the exhibit. And I just thought it was really interesting to connect to another artist, to sort of show the story between two women artists and how we see each other and how we see ourselves and have that dialogue uh, through the visual um, art. This was the painting I did of myself. Unfortunately, I don't have Mel's paintings um, to show you her style as well, but these were my pieces that were in the show. Uh, myself standing with the painting. So you get an idea a little bit of the scale of the work. So as an artist, you're always working from emptiness to fullness and back again. Let's see if I can go back. So that's my empty studio. Um, and then the full studio packed to the brim pre-show. Um, and you're just creating, uh, you're basically creating something out of nothing <laughs> constantly. And so I wanted to show that. The only thing I know is that I paint because I need to. Frida Kahlo, artist, woman. Frida Kahlo lived between July 6th, 1907 and July 13th, 1954. She died at age 47. Uh, she painted portraits, self-portraits, works inspired by nature, and artifacts of Mexico. She explored themes of identity, post-colonialism, class, her Mexican race, heritage, and her gender. Her work was strongly autobi autobiographical, and her work was often described as surrealist. Oops, that's me. Um, it was often described as surrealist, but um, to this, Frida said her work was about her reality, not necessarily about her dreams. And so she challenged that idea a little bit. For my part, I was born on July 10th, 1979, 25 years after Frida's passing. And I hope to live past 47 years. <laughs> uh, I'm 41 now, so I have, yeah, anyway. Um, I've been an artist since I was a child, and my work tends to be autobiographical as well. Um, it leans towards a magical realism, which is similar to hers in some way. Um, it's what, what I'm trying to say when I, when I say magical realism is that it references a subject, but it also sort of aims to distort the subject in some way. So it's both real and enigmatic. 
Um, in this photo, Frida is doing a portrait of her father, Guillaume. Uh, sorry, Guillermo, pardon me. Um, and Frida had a, a very close relationship with her father. Um, at the time that I in initially did this, um, this slideshow, there was a show going on at the Glenbow Museum here in Calgary. And there are quite a few um, photos of her father in the show uh, that he had taken of himself. Um, anyway. It's pretty interesting. Um, after Frida had, uh, or Frida had polio as a child, and she later had a, quite a severe bus accident. Um, so her potential career as a doctor and her schooling was put to an end at that point. Um, and instead, she started to apply herself as an artist. And uh, that was similar to her father. And her father really encouraged her to, to go that direction. This is her father, Guillermo Carlo. Um, he was originally from Germany. He, he was a photographer. And like I said, there was quite a few photos of him uh, at the Glenbow Museum a, a few years ago. Um, he did a lot of self-portraits, very direct gaze. His work was seen as quite avant-garde at the time um, because he, he did these very direct um, gaze self-portraits of him nude, um, of himself nude. So that was seen as a little bit risque um, and his work really influenced uh, Frida Kahlo especially the way she presented herself in her portraits and her direct um, kind of unapologetic gaze. The, um, her father really favored um, Frida and he sent her to the National Preparatory School um, to become a doctor and, and to focus on her Indigenous heritage and um, she spent a time with a number of really politically minded students and called herself the daughter of the revolution. Um, but then she got sick and things shifted a little bit in her life. Um, my own father and mom, my, my parents have been really influential and instrumental in my life and they've really encouraged me to pursue my art. Um, so I draw a bit of a comparison to uh, to Frida's dad and and um, that really to pursue art and such a risky um, you know career <laughs> um, you really need someone behind you to to sort of believe in what you're doing. So um, my parents had quite a mix of pragmatism and spontaneity and emotionality, um, and so they they were really behind me uh, in doing this and I am forever grateful. <laughs> I met Veronica at Chirino uh, from Mexico City in 2007 and we began a, a strong friendship. And around then I was having some, uh, some, some health issues and it seemed that Veronica introduced me to Frida Kahlo at that point. I can't quite remember the origins, but I'm sure that it came through, through her. And um, I really became interested in this Mexican artist, her ways of overcoming difficulties, her as a woman artist, her style, her feminism, and her fragility and strength. Um, so although Frida was of Mexican heritage, and this was obviously very important to her life, she also seemed able to transcend boundaries. So she could become part of uh, Canada and Mexico. And my friend Veronica at the time was transcending her own boundaries, um, combining cultures, and she was learning new things about Canada, becoming a Canadian citizen. And I was, as a Canadian, um, learning about Mexico and Frida Kahlo. And I think um, that her, that relationship, our, our connection gave me permission to kind of cross those boundaries and connect to um, someone I might not have otherwise um, connected with. <laughs> um, there's a writer, Lawrence Hill. He's the writer of the Book of Negroes and Blood, the Stuff of Life. And he spoke at the BAMP Center in 2015. And his advice to young writers um, was, or, well, he actually, people often say, uh, they're encouraged to write about what they know. And his advice 
was to write about what you don't know and to learn about something outside of yourself and outside of your boundaries and and to put yourself in someone else's shoes um so yeah so basically with veronica's encouragement and with my own health dif difficulties um and my curiosity and keen interest in strong women, I turned towards Frida Kahlo, uh, someone I wanted to know more about. I began to try to become Frida um, and to put myself in her shoes and to find inspiration in her face. Um, my husband even suggested that I grow a unibrow which I actually can do, um, but I decided that might be a little too too much. But um, he, I wanted to emulate Frida Kahlo. So I really found courage in dressing up like her, and I gained strength through her strength. Her self-portraits and their complexity always intrigued me. This painting is called The Two Fridas, and it's considered one of Frida's most notable paintings. It's very large. It's 68 inches by 68 inches, and it's a double self-portrait. Um, it depicts two versions of herself seated together. One is wearing the European style dress, and the other is the uh, traditional uh, Tiuera dress. Um, pardon my pronunciation of that, but um, some historians suggest that the two figures in the painting represent Frida's dual heritage. Um, her father, Guillermo Calo of German heritage and her mother, Mathilde uh, Calderon of um, Spanish and Native American heritage. Um, the other interpretation is that there, um, the, the Tijuera Frida was really adored by Diego Rivera, her husband, and the European Frida was rejected. So this painting uh, was made in 1939, and that was the same year that Frida and Diego um, were divorced for the first time. I think they divorced once and then remarried. Um, and so that was another suggestion with the very turbulent skies. Um, so yeah, but they remarried a year later, I think. I think we're always searching and questioning our identity as artists, and that search becomes very public. I like the idea of different selves meeting, holding hands, reflecting, and containing. This collage work on paper was done in 2014, and it uses one of my favorite decorative papers, red papers in particular, uh, to create this self-portrait. And I really wanted to just accentuate the lines and keep the painting very simple. And this is the paper. I love, I love different papers. So I just had to put in a photo of that. Sorry, my, my notes are tiny a bit. I've done a, a number of drawings on collage paper and um, their paintings, they're obviously inspired by Frida Kahlo. And sometimes if I'm not sure if the painting is of me or of Frida Kahlo. And I think that the, there's an overlap of our lives and uh, that sometimes that can be feel a little bit uncanny. And I just find constant strength in her. So I continue to return to her. At the end of the day, we can endure much more than we think that than we think we can. Frida Kahlo to suffer to overcome. Frida Kahlo had polio as a child, and she was in a bus accident in her teens that affected the rest of her life. And even so, she seemed quite wry in her experience of pain. Uh, this was a, a photo in the Glenbo Museum. Uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and she refers to her pain in her art. Yeah. 
Um, she never apologizes for her pain and for her state, and she continually overcomes her, her pain. In my own life, when my body has let me down, I found solace in Frida. Um, there's a great deal of our life that we cannot control, and Frida was not able to have children due to her health conditions and her, uh, her bus accident. She had several miscarriages, and she painted about those in her work. Um, the loss of children is a very taboo subject, and obviously the loss of any person is difficult. Um, but that has been uh, part of um, some of our family's experiences. And uh, that was a draw as well for me to Frida and how she overcame that through her work. Um, we connect to children in, in many different ways. And it's a very special thing. I, I now have a son that I feel very grateful, um, but we've had some loss in my family and it's uh, uh, certainly, um, I found solace in Frida's bravery through her own losses. Life is a constant uh, cycle between emptiness and quietness and loss and also abundance and fullness and hope and, um, spring and newness and it's this constant cycle um, between these two things just like the empty studio moves to the full studio and back again feet what do I need them for if I have wings to fly over the years I have often returned to themes related to transformation and change in my work likely because change is so hard. Um, and the butterfly is a theme and symbol that I've returned to, to describe different parts of my life. Um, the symbol is often personal, but it's also universal. And so I go back to it over and over again at different points in time as my life continues to transform and change. This is a large painting in my parents' home and it was made in 2009. It seems that Frida also explored themes of change, transformation, and transformation in her own work and through her work. Uh, art, whether it's um, whether through the direct symbols used or the very act itself, is transformative. It reflects um, it reflects where we're at as people, and somehow goes beyond the marks to something more, and that is the mystery of art. Art itself in its very process, from the beginning of an empty painting to an artist's decision to call it complete, is transformative. It changes, it has to change to become what it is meant to become. Creativity is a messy, intuitive, and ever-changing process. It doesn't always work out as planned. Actually, it often doesn't work out as planned. And it's very frustrating sometimes and problem-ridden. But it's beautiful. And as humans, we, continue, we are continually drawn to the act of creating. I often paint outside in Calgary. <laughs> which is good it'll, it'll be a crazy year of painting outside and um I like the messiness of painting outside the organic quality of the space the chaos of out of outside often moves into the work so the paintings show these paintings um show the transition from under layer the initial paint to um the subsequent layers that follow Oil paint is amazing because it can be layered and it can be forgiven and it can be reworked and revisited and painted over, unlike something like watercolor where it has to be very planned out. <laughs> um, so when I was a kid, I would uh, visit my dad. He's a geologist and I'd visit him in his office. And my early memories of going into his office were seeing all the maps uh, on his walls 
And I'm not, I'm terrible at reading maps. They're very logical and linear. And I'm not, log- I'm not very linear uh, uh, to my dad's confusion. But um, I, 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 I see these paintings as maps of sorts. And they're, they're layers, they're lines, they're colors, they're forms, they're empty spaces that create a visual landscape. Um, and so I, I see some, some crossover between what he did and, and these pieces. Um, this particular work, oh, sorry. Oh yeah, so in the case of these particular uh, landscapes in process, they're Frida Kahlo landscapes, and she transitions through these paintings, um, and it's, these are very kind of raw outside pieces, um, and there's quite a change between what you see here and what's to come. So for example, the one in the bottom right corner, this is the early stages of this next painting here. So you can see it really changes and it's kind of this blobby, very um, visceral piece. And then it kind of gets more defined and structured as I rework the painting and sort of figure out what I want to define and and what colors I want to bring out and what details. So this piece is called um, An Indication of Joy. and, And it was shown in that bottom right hand corner. And I'm interested in Frida's emotions, her joy, her sorrow, the way she changed throughout her life, um, her autobiographical bent. And this painting is particularly intriguing to me because there's three hands in it. There is her hand on her heart, and there's also her hand earrings, which were famously given to her by Picasso. And um, I just find those earrings to be so fun and wild and playful and it kind of speaks to the relationship uh, that she had with other artists and um, and I like I like hands <laughs> um, this is a piece called musing Two, and it was done as part of a master's gallery show uh, several years ago called exposure and the show was intended to show and to expose the, the photo reference material that artists use to create their paintings and how reference material is reinterpreted and changed and um, and played with um, a lot by artists. So that was the initial painting and then I reworked it. I sculpted my face out a little bit more um, and I, I kind of created a sharper nose and uh, almost less, um, less perfect looking face. And then this was um, the reference material that was part of that show to show the, the process. Um, this is a photo taken by Michelle Rainey. Uh, and so in the light of reference photos, the, I wanted to show some of my reference photos of Frida's face and how I um, used them as a starting point and then changed the painting. Um, I just, with photos, I use them as a, a, a kind of a loose uh, point to begin my painting and to kind of map out where the face will be and then I reinvent and I re-see it. So this was a painting I did using that reference photo and I did it for the YWCA in Banff several years ago. Um, they were creating a new facility for um, women and children who are uh, moving out of um, you know harder abusive situations basically and um they were yeah setting up a facility for them and i i did this painting as a donation to to that organization and um who better to paint than frida Kahlo, who um you know speaks of vulnerability and strength and so i did this painting in front of 200 plus people um uh, in a ballroom situation in the semi dark, <laughs> it was a stressful uh, process, but it was a really great, um, great, great time. And the proceeds went to the YWCA. Um, the painting transformed during the evening, and I really st- I start with quite an abstract um, kind of combination of colors and layers, and just uh, paint right onto that. So this was the final piece. Um, and 
that's this is another painting I did with that same reference uh, uh, beginning of Frida. And I just wanted to show um, that paintings, even from that same starting point, can be so varied. Um, even when I try to do the same painting, I, I often am not able to. And um, yeah, I mean, sometimes people want me to, I do commissions and they want me to do the same painting and I can't. And so that's something beautiful about art is that it's very, each piece is its own uh, moment in time and its own reference, like its own uh, creation. So, another part of transformation in life as in art is about finding the light in the darkness. In January 2017, I was in Iceland during the darkest month of the year. Um, uh, January and I became interested in both the light and the dark I'm I'm drawn to this idea um, both in a metaphorical and a literal sense um, so it would basically get light around 10 30 a.m. and it got dark around 4 p.m. and I saw the stars and the moon and I really found solace in their light and I was drawn to the light in people's windows in Reykjavik and the Christmas lights and the light of home and the light of hope. And so I aimed to describe this combination of dark and light in my paintings. And this was a piece that I called Star Sky 2. Uh, it's 24 by 24 oil and canvas. And it hung at um, Buckland Merrifield Gallery, which is now Spicer Merrifield Gallery in St. John. Um, New Brunswick in 2018. So this was based on my time in Iceland. The dark and the light are really part of everything and particularly transformation and change. So going back to the quote feet, what do I need them for when I have wings to fly? I, in my interpretation, it's a quote about overcoming one's limitations through art. Um, it's about transforming a canvas, about transforming a space, transcending oneself. And this is me moving from that empty space to the full space. And I'm surrounded by, by my Frida paintings. The studio is full to the brim, and that's my favorite point in time. Uh, it's right pre-show, and so it's just so full and full of my ideas and full of color and mark making. And then they all go out <laughs> into the world, and they just, you know, hopefully don't come back. Um, and they just go out and tell a story, and my studio is empty again, and then I start again. And this is a photo by Michelle Rainey uh, reflecting on Frida and her influence in my life and my work. My paintings are interspersed with Frida's. Amy, oh, Amy, try me. <laughs> Portraits, inspiration. So basically this next little section um, showcases uh, sort of my, my paintings interspersed with Frida photos and sort of our kind of relationship and our dialogue going back and forth. Um, so between themes related to portraits, overcoming suffering, the artist and the woman, change and transformation through art, I found many commonalities with Frida, as many people do, I think. And I have continued to return to her in my work. This is a photo of Master's Gallery here in Calgary, um, who represent my work here. So. So the next series of slides show painting and paintings in process, finished works, uh, commissions, photos of myself, Frida, me as Frida, and Frida herself. I thought it would be interesting and visually exciting and kind of intriguing to show a series of the images together. Um, I'm su such a visual person that I like, I just like to see all the pictures of Frida. <laughs> And I just think it, it's so exciting to see them interspersed with one another and having this dialogue. This is a small series of Frida paintings I did. They're all 16 by 20, oil on canvas. This is one of those pieces in a different context. Light always makes a big difference in art. This is a photo of me um, 
reflections, reflections and embodying Frida. I'm holding a pair. Um, part of the Frida series, this is in my studio, again, sort of showcasing the, the paintings in different contexts and how that changes work and, and how you see it. This is a commission painting I did for a client in Toronto um, through Canvas Gallery several years ago. And this is the reference material I used. So like I was saying before, the reference material is only a loose starting point. This was another, uh, a painting again of the hands, the three hands, the two earring hands, um, the and the hand on the heart. And I did this as a painting for my husband. He really likes the vibrant colors. And there's the reference material. Uh, and you can see the, the hand earrings there from Picasso. Uh, this is another portrait of Frida aiming to celebrate her Mexican heritage. And this is a photo taken by Michelle Rainey. Um, I'm wearing um, clothes from Mexico from my friend uh, Veronica Chirino. And she's from Mexico City, so she lent me all these beautiful fabrics. And this was a photo shoot day I did um, for, for healing and uh, um, for mainly that. <laughs> it was taken in Cochrane. And you can see I'm reinterpreting these, these pictures. Um, I, I have these, all these photo references from you know, my own photos and photos that I find of Frida. Frida with her bow, looking very, uh, you know, looking directly at the camera. There she is with the bow. I'm sorry for the poor quality of that. And you can see that I'm reinterpreting each, each image. This is one of my favorite um, photos of Frida and, and I think one of the most famous, uh, famous ones. Um, on Anna Schultz's blog, she writes about Frida's sense of fashion and that her distinctive look, um, that she used clothes for aesthetic reasons, but she also used them to mask her injuries as she became more and more um, injured after 40 surgeries. And she, she used uh, the clothes and the fashion to kind of cover up her, herself. Um, so yeah, according to Anna, the more incapacitated uh, Frida Kahlo became, the more colorful and attention seeking the outfits were. So this photo of Frida with the green wall background was taken by one of her photographer lovers, um, Nicholas Murray in 1938. And it's questionable whether it was really on the cover of Vogue magazine in 1939. So I'm not sure why, but <laughs> that's what's written on the blog. So they, they're not sure, I guess, if it was on the cover. But this photo is really striking um, and it's, it's really drawn me in over the years. And I've aimed to continue to try and capture this in my paintings. So you can see my, my aim to capture that, that background, that green, that direct gaze uh, in my pieces. I paint flowers so they will not die. Immortality, capturing a moment. Like freedom, I, I am, I'm interested in capturing moments in time, imaginings, sights, what we see literally, and sights that we feel uh, in our, well, feel in our hearts, I guess. Um, I painted this piece after my time in Iceland and when I was reflecting on the landscapes of Iceland, um, but also the canoes of Canada. And I was interested in finding the light in the darkness. The next two collage pieces were made again in response to ideas related to fullness, emptiness, light and dark, the notion of being lost and found. And both this collage piece and the next one are called Lost and Found, one and two. 
I'm interested in themes of quietness, of abundance, the constant interaction of the two. So that's already come up a little bit. I adore my garden, particularly in its abundant state. And that's not unlike Frida. She was uh, quite a gardener, I think, as well. During the summer, I paint plein air in the garden as, as many hours as possible and as many days as the weather will permit. Frida said, I paint flowers so they will not die. Through her work and life, she immortalized personal moments and her own visual references. I try to do much the same in my paintings um, by um, painting my direct world and also reinterpreting it. No apologies. So the next photos are of my garden and its constant change. For me, these paintings capture vibrant moments in time, but they also remind us that moments are fleeting and they're moving and they're impermanent. A fleeting passing smile. And gardens during all the seasons. Again, I paint outside in order to capture that organic messiness of the natural world. And sometimes bugs and leaves fall into my paintings. Um, I do try to keep them out as much as I can. Um, I'm not exactly sure where I am in my notes, but this is me painting outside in my backyard. This piece is called Pulse, and I think it combines um, the energy of Frida Kahlo and the energy of my garden. Um, so this was the piece I chose as kind of my favorite painting to showcase this event. And it's very uh, bold, I think, but there's quietness in it as well. And this is Frida filling my studio um, only to go out to Master's Gallery. My husband Aaron and he uh, he's a good man, so I just wanted to include it, include this in my show because he's helped me a lot um, and to make all this possible. So you got to thank the people in your life. Um, finally, the full circle and the return to my series of women paintings that I started in 2018 in Berlin. Painting in Berlin on the top floor of an old German apartment and in a forgotten building in the middle of a forgotten place has given me the solitude I needed to start something new. So because I started my talk off with my paintings of women, I would like to finish it off that way as well. I was in Germany for the month of April 2018. It's the last time I traveled <laughs> uh, quite extensively. and. Um, this was the view from my window. I did quite a few paintings of women while I was there. Here's the view from my window. This is my studio apartment. And my project was to look at German expressionist women artists throughout history um, while simultaneously, while at the same time painting women in an expressive German expressionist style, basically. A number of women came to my studio uh, where I photographed them and I interviewed them and I painted them while they were there. There are quite a few uh, women biking around um, in, in the city and I was really taken by that. So this is a woman on her bike. I also did a German inspired Frida Kahlo. I had two studios in Berlin. Uh, one was in my apartment and one was in an old industrial, dirty part of the city. Uh, I, I um, knew an artist there who, who graciously let me use his studio for the month. And this was in my studio apartment. 
Um, so I would paint in there and also sleep in there. <laughs> so I continue to aim to paint and to evolve, to change, to expand through suffering, to transform through my art and new possibilities. I try to connect to Frida who did much the same and so inspired me and probably all of you as well. I'm so grateful to have found a connection in Frida, a woman, an artist who transcended her struggles through her art. She painted her reality and for that she has moved me. So, that's my talk. <laughs> Hey, thanks very much, Amy. This video was published by the nbmediacoop.org in New Brunswick, Canada.